This is Colonel Stephen Nagel, U.S. Air Force retired and former NASA astronaut. On November 8th and 9th, I will be in Lebanon, Missouri as part of the American Radio Relay League Midwest Amateur Radio Convention. During these two days, I will be speaking to the public free of charge at the Cowan Civic Center about my experience as an astronaut with 723 hours logged in four space flights. There's still a lot of activity in space. We've had astronauts in space continuously since the year 2000, and we still do, although now they're launching and, and recovering on Russian Soyuz spacecraft, uh, but in the big picture, uh, there's kind of, in my mind, there's two branches that are there. There's the commercial branch and there's a the government branch, and the commercial branch is really something new where NASA is providing seed funding to companies to, to develop rockets and spacecraft, carry cargo and later people to Earth orbit. So there's one path, you know, for people to be involved. The other path is the, the I call the government path, the NASA path, which is a program called Space Launch System, which is a big rocket they're developing, and a spacecraft called Orion, which is a carryover from the Constellation program that was canceled a couple of years ago. But that whole program is to go explore beyond Earth orbit. So if it continues, you know, and doesn't get canceled, and I hope it doesn't, then there's going to be quite a bit of activity. Uh, either as astronauts or to work in the space program, you need to have a technical background, uh, obviously, so something in the order of math, science, engineering. Uh, I always tell students to study what they like, you know, I mean, don't don't go down some path of an area that you perhaps aren't that interested in. Study what you like. If it happens to match up with what qualifies you to work in the space program, all the better. And there's lots of different backgrounds of people working in the space program, and they're not all just engineers either. I mean, they have public affairs people, you know, human resources people. It spans the whole gamut. So there's lots of people working in the space program. Uh, to be an astronaut, that's a little bit more specific is uh, people like to hear about my own personal experiences in space, so I'll talk about that. And, and I'll, I'll fold that in a little bit with uh, where we came from and where we're going, uh, just as I was talking about in the last question, you know, when I addressed the, the, the commercial aspect and the government aspect of where the space program's going now. So people want to know about that, so I'll talk about that. And then it is uh, amateur radio related. And I did get a license, and I flew two flights, actually, with an amateur radio on board, just called SARX, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So I, I'll tell you about some of the experiences we had. We did a lot of good work with that radio, contacting school kids, answering their questions, and we had a lot of fun with the radio, too, and random contacts. So there's some somewhat humorous stories uh, along those lines. So I'll try to fold some amateur radio into this, too. Because when we started, when we were put together as a crew, there was one person who was an amateur radio, had an amateur radio license. That was Ken Cameron. And he had all these qualifications, and he's very uh, into the hobby. So he prevailed upon the other four of us to get our license. And I would say, uh, of the four of us, uh, one person was really gung-ho. Two were, you know, kind of, okay, I'm fine to do it. One really didn't want to do it, but we brought him into the mix eventually. So we all wound up having our, our radio license, which was a neat thing. Uh, and we did use that radio a lot. It was a short flight. In those days, they were flying short missions. So it was a really all crammed into the schedule to do anything with the radio. I mean, the, the more ideal place, I think, for a ham radio is on longer flights, especially on a space station like they have now, where you actually have a weekend off and you can really, really use it. But anyway, uh, yes, we did. We, I, I'm pretty sure that was the flight where we had a close proximity to the mirror, uh, at least close enough to be line of sight with them for a short time, and we did exchange hellos, you know, and fortunately they knew a little bit more English than I knew Russian, so, so we said a quick hello. I later, at some meeting somewhere, met one of those two crew members, and we, we talked through an interpreter about that. So it was pretty neat, you know, to talk to them direct line of sight. We all studied for our technician license, and and then there was a, uh, a ham fest up at Dallas. So we went up to Dallas, four of us, I guess, of the five, went up to Dallas, uh, or maybe it was three of us, I forget. But we, we went up there and took uh, Gordon West's uh, morning briefing, you know, and all that to, to really cram the information, then took the test, and we just got the, the license in order. Actually, I was secretly hoping for RAT, <laughs> but, but I got RAX, and then uh, Linda got, uh, no, I was RAW, then Linda got RAX. This was 1990 when we did that, so I renewed it in 2000, for both of us in 2010. So we still got a license. So we do occasionally talk about the space program in terms of where it is and what, what's going on right now, because we're really interested in it, but we're, we're spectators. I mean, we're not on the inside anymore at all. But we talk mostly about other things. I mean, you know, it's a family life. We got a younger daughter, so, you know, there's all those things, just like 
any family. There's no difference. Oh yeah, yeah. I've done it for both daughters. Got an older daughter, and she's you know, going to get married here pretty soon. So, did it for her when she was young. Did it for our younger daughter now. But I, even our younger daughters at the age, you know, at a certain age when they want that, there's a little bit older age where they don't even acknowledge. <laughs> you. So I think we're at that point with my younger daughter now. So the show and tell days are probably behind us. Linda uh, got her PhD here, so uh, they brought her back after her NASA career to teach in physics. She she got her PhD in physics. So. So I'm, I have a degree in engineering, so I came along, uh, you know, and am attached to the mechanical engineering department where I teach, a, or help teach a course on jet engines, actually, it explains that engine down there. So it's a propulsion course. And I also put together a course, uh, it's got an engineering title, but it's a non-technical course on the history of space flight, which I had a lot of fun doing. It was really, really good. So I, I, that that is my interaction with the students in the classroom. I'm also an advisor for the uh, American Institute of Ast Aeronautics and Astronautics, which is the professional organization for, you know, aeronautics and astronautics, and there's a student chapter here, so I'm their advisor. And also, uh, up till this semester, I was uh, helping to advise students who are on academic probation, so I was kind of over in that arena too, which was very interesting, and, and you know, it was a good experience for me, but now I, I've gotten away from that. There was a point when I did, I think shortly after leaving it, you know, I, I, I missed it, but, what you'll find is, uh, at least for pilots, what they miss mostly is flying jets. And, and I was able to turn that around. Uh, I, I left the astronaut office in 1995 now. It's been a long time ago. But I stayed at NASA, and after a year or so, I got into their aircraft operations. They operate a fleet of airplanes. So I, I was an instructor to the astronauts and did a lot of flying up till two years ago. So what I do miss is flying jets, you know. But, but you know, you have to quit sometimes. It's kind of like playing a sport, so you want to quit when you're kind of on top, you know, not on the way on the downhill slide. So I think I picked a good time to make a career change and with, you know, some years left in me to come here and work with students. And that's been really a good experience. I, I have enjoyed that greatly. I think the, the students need encouragement to, to study hard and get good grades. They, they need to understand how important uh, your grades are, especially when you get to high school and then into college for kind of setting the course and opening doors for you for the rest of your life, regardless of what field you're in, it doesn't really matter. And then the other, uh, I think the other big thing that uh, you all know and that sometimes kids don't really realize is it's all about perseverance. <laughs> it really, I mean, uh, most of the people I've worked with were not geniuses, you know, a few were, but I'm not, and most of them weren't. They just hung in there, and they just kept trying and trying and trying until they got what they wanted, and that's true in most any area of life. So you, you gotta just be willing to, you know, fail a few times, get back up, and just keep going, and eventually, you, you may not wind up exactly where you thought you would, but it'll be something good. It'll be something, if you have the education, you have the perseverance, I think it'll all work out for you. And they're worth, I think, saying again is that, you know, the I'll, Tell them about the importance of education, you know, how important it is. And, and I'm not going to tell them they need to be uh, astronauts or even in the space program. Some may want to be, some may want to do something else. That's okay. But they need to really take their study seriously and they need to be willing to, to be in it for the long haul and persevere because a lot of these goals that, that you have, being a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever it happens to be, don't happen in a year or so. It takes years of work to do that. And, some of, the, some of the time is fun and enjoyable getting there, and some of it isn't, you know. And you just got to persevere through the things that aren't so much fun to get to where you want to go. So that's the message. I hope you'll accept my invitation to bring yourself and your children and enjoy two days of exciting seminars about amateur radio and space exploration. Remember, there is no charge to attend. November 8th and November 9th, the Cowan Civic Center in Lebanon, Missouri. I hope to see you there.